Hello students, this is C.A. Minati Jani from Faculty of Business Administration, GLS University. Today we are going to discuss very important topic from Sale of Goods Act 1930. But before we begin, let us understand what is sale. A sale is not a contract. Sale is a contract. But then if sale is a contract, why we are not studying the same under Indian Contract Act 1872? Earlier, sale was covered in Indian Contract Act 1872 only. However, with increased volume of sales transactions and its complexities, there was a need to have a separate act of Sale of Goods Act 1930. And as a result, we are having a separate new act regulating sales transactions as Sale of Goods Act 1930. <clears throat> Coming to the definition of sale. According to Section 4, a contract of sale of goods is a contract whereby the seller first transfers or agrees to transfer the property in goods to the buyer for a money consideration called the price. Now, if you observe here, it includes transfers or agrees to transfer both. It means it includes present and future both. Then can we say that sale includes sale as well as agreement to sale? Yes. What is sale? Sale is where the seller transfers the ownership of the goods to the buyer immediately. And what is agreement to sale? It is agreement to sale where the ownership of goods is to be transferred at a future date or subject to some conditions to be fulfilled later on. It means here when we say sale, it includes both. Present, that is sale. Future, that is agreement to sale. Okay, now next we are going to study what essential elements must be present in a contract to be called a contract of sale. Here you can see, these are the essentials of contract of sale. What are those essentials? Bilateral contract, transfer of property, goods, consideration and essential elements of contract. Today we will be studying all these essentials individually. So the first essential is bilateral contract. So here I would like to add essentials means this all elements results into a valid contract of sale. Okay. So the first essential is bilateral contract. It is very obvious that in a contract of sale there must be two parties. One party who buys or agrees to buy is a buyer and the other party who sells or agrees to sell is a seller. Now why agrees, why buy and agrees to buy and why sells and agrees to sell? Because sale includes both sale and agreement to sell. Right? You can never sell goods to yourself. A buyer and a seller can never be a same person. Right? So there must be a bilateral contract and as you all know, that sale is also a contract and in a contract there must be two parties. So similarly here also in a contract of sale there must be two parties. One party is a buyer, the other party is a seller. Okay, so bilateral contract. It is a bilateral contract because the property in goods has to pass from one party to another. A person cannot buy the goods himself. 
Okay, then a question here can arise of joint owners. Do you know a joint owner can be a party to a contract of sale? How? There is one car which is owned by two joint owners, A and B. A, though he is a joint owner, if he agrees to sell his share to B, he can transfer that share to B and make B a sole owner. So, a joint owner can be a party to a contract of sale. Otherwise, a buyer and seller, they both must be two different persons. Okay, going ahead with the second essential. The second essential is of transfer of property. Obviously, it's a sale. So, goods must be transferred from one person to another. But here, what is very important which we should focus on is your transfer should include ownership and not simply possession. That means under a contract of sale, one person is transferring along with property, ownership of that property to the buyer and not simply possession. Clear? Okay. <clears throat> Very important uh, element of this contract, goods. And this is the element which uh, makes contract of sale different from any ordinary contract. Why? Because in this contract, the subject matter is goods. The whole contract is around goods. Right? Okay. So, let's go through the definition of Goods first. According to section 2 subsection 7, goods means every kind of movable property other than actionable claims and money and includes stock and shares, growing crops, grass and things attached to or forming part of the land which are agreed to be severed before sale or under the contract of sale. See here you can see actionable claims and money. They are not covered under the definition of goods. <clears throat> if we go through the definition of goods, goods talks about movable goods only. Here, I would like to give you one example. If Mr. A agrees to sell his farmhouse located at Sanan to his friend Mr. B for 30 lakhs rupees, is it a sale? Yes, it is a sale. But is it covered under Sale of Goods Act 1930? No. It is not covered under Sale of Goods Act 1930. Why? Because the land is immovable. Please be very clear about the difference between movable goods and immovable goods. Sale of Goods Act deals only and only with movable goods. What is movable goods? Something that, that can something that we can shift from one place to other, except actionable claims and money. In the same case of Mr. A and B, if I say that Mr. A agrees to sell cultivated fruits of his farmhouse to Mr. B, then yes, it is a contract of sale and it will be covered under Sale of Goods Act 1930. Why? Because fruits are movable goods. In the case of, then what about the case of a sale of farmhouse? Sale of farmhouse is also a contract of sale, but it will be covered under Transfer of Property Act and not Sale of Goods Act 1930. Okay. Very important aspect of definition of goods. 
that uh, we have already discussed that actionable claims and money are not covered under the definition of goods that means but here it is very important to note that money means only current money only that money which is recognized currency in circulation in particular country right so if we are talking about antique coins old coins rare coins then once again they become goods okay now the next essential of contract of sale is price price consideration quid pro quo something in return right as you know that for making any contract there must be an existence of consideration what is consideration consideration that means something in return but here when we talk about contract of sale consideration is different than consideration what we see in indian contract act if we go to indian contract act consideration can be anything it is not necessarily to be in cash or in money but here when we talk about sale it has to be money consideration there must be a price which a buyer is giving to a seller okay i would like to give you one example here if mr a sells his scooter to mr b for 20000 rupees yes you will say it is a sale why because there are two parties scooter is movable goods there is also a consideration and so it is a sale here if mr a agrees to give 1 kg wheat to mr b against 1 kg rice then is it a contract of sale is it a contract yes it is a contract once again because mr a and mr b they are two different parties there is consideration also right for wheat somebody is getting rice and for rice somebody is getting wheat but it is not a sale why it is barter or exchange in order to be called a sale there must be consideration in money coming to the last essential of valid contract of sale as you all know that sale is also nothing else but a contract and in order to make a valid contract there are certain essential elements required like free consent intention to create legal relation and legality of object once again just like any other contract in a contract of sale all these essentials must be present then and only then it is called a contract of sale under sales of under sale of goods act 1930 this all essential elements must be present in a contract of sale to be called a contract of sale under sale of goods act 1930 today we have discussed what is sale and what are essential elements in order to make a contract of sale there are many more topics like conditions and warranties rights of unpaid seller this all topics we will discuss in the next lecture thank you